Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox here. I am going to give a, a motivating talk for the X Informatics uh, class that is available as a MOOC for um, part of our data science curriculum. Uh, this particular motivation will explain big data and the cloud, which are centered as the as major components of future economic development and developments. So that title yeah, sort of captures the rallying point of this course, which is that the, uh, the major activity at the moment, uh, an activity that will increase in importance is using clouds, running data analytics, doing this collaboratively to process big data, and one solves problems in X informatics. <clears throat> Where X is, um, runs over these uh, different values, astronomy, biology, biomedicine, business, chemistry, climate, crisis, earth science, energy, environment, finance, health, intelligence, Lifestyle, marketing, medicine, pathology, policy, radar informatics, security, sensor, social, sustainability, wealth and wellness. And there are many other fields of informatics like physics, which are defined implicitly by the activity in the domain, but not given a specific, a specific name. <coughs> um, these activities span industry and research. And this slide here just points out that these things exist on the internet, and uh, they correspond to web pages and books and things like that, which cover these various aspects of uh, informatics. Now we come to an introduction to this uh, motivation. And here's the abstract of this talk, which uh, notes the uh, incredible amount of data which is uh, being increasing dramatically, partly because of the number of people involved in this increase. Uh, companies like Google, Amazon, Netflix, just have lots of people using their sites and generating data. Uh, there's also a lot of increase just due to the broad deployment of sensors in, within the environment. And of course, smartphones uh, themselves all have multiple sensors. They all communicate with the cloud. And they're both fetching data from the cloud, which data has been processed according to our rallying cry. And uh, they're also, of course, putting data on the cloud. And we have smart homes, ubiquitous cities, smart power grids, intelligent vehicles, all increasing this trend. <coughs> Science for some time, uh, with perhaps less dramatic growth, although the Large Hadron Collider recently coming online is a good example of the uh, um, of the amount of data coming in science. That field has 15 petabytes per year. Um, and this data uh, is or will be stored in immense clouds, sometimes uh, the, one doesn't actually use the cloud architecture, but uh, one has architectures which are similar to clouds, so good high throughput systems. And those uh, clouds co locate the storage and the computing to perform the analytics that transforms data into information, information into wisdom or knowledge, and knowledge slash wisdom into decisions. And data mining is another way of terming data analytics. And it finds what you might call the knowledge diamonds in the data rough. This is disruptive technology, it's driving the economy, creating millions of jobs in this area of data science. And we discussed this revolution and its implications for universities and society. So this uh, slide um, points out some important trends which we will uh, discuss some of these here, especially the data deluge, uh, which is um, a clear trend. Um, Amazon, we've already 
mentioned, which is an e-commerce example, the community where we have social networking like Facebook or search engines like Bing and Google. And of course, we will also discuss science and medical applications. Uh, this data deluge is um, partly exploiting and partly driving rapid advance, continued rapid advance in chip technology. And as chips get use a smaller feature size, then they can get more cores, namely more computers on a single chip. Those are particularly, those have sort of two impacts. One is that on the server side, you just have a lot more computing in your cloud, because you have multi-core chips in your cloud. On the client side, it says that the as the um, chips are smaller, you can take smaller devices and put pack a lot of intelligence into those devices. So this is partly uh, driving the revolution with smartphones and tablets and sensors, which uh, are smaller, lighter weight clients from those in the past. And although PCs are still important, people do not, they do not have the excitement and the driving advance that they did in the past. Um, so there's an, an interesting difference between clients here and servers. Servers are able to use multi-core chips with great vigor. Clients do not find that so easy. And so in fact, they use smaller chips, and like, which are, you'll find in smartphones, rather than try to pack lots of cores in a client machine. This then gets captured in clouds, which have cheaper, greener, and easier to use information technology to process applications. And that's what, uh, as I remember, we are using clouds to solve problems in X informatics. All of this has new jobs and new curricula. Those jobs could be associated with clouds as a classic computer science, um, so-called distributed system topic, or the area of this class, data science, which is capturing the, uh, it's a new area, though it's a field that's existed for some time, but its growth is attracting attention and motivating the development of curricula in this area. Gartner is um, well known for producing so-called hype cycles every year. They come out in July, and um, here's the one from 2012. And if we look at this, we will um, we see here big data with this arrow pointing at it. Here we have analytics in memory and text analytics. Home health monitoring is sensors. I didn't even note that one. Here we have predictive analytics. That's effectively part of data mining. Here we have cloud computing. In-memory database management systems are part of the cloud uh, com computer architecture. And we have up here private cloud computing. Notice um, one has this general shape with um, technologies um, driven by technology rising up to, the, to this peak here of inflated um, expectations. Uh, <coughs> Then they plunge down and come here to the trough of disillusionment. And hopefully they get through that, some technologies don't. And they move up onto the plateau of productivity through the slope of enlightenment. So this is a rather whimsical but uh, reasonably insightful um, way of describing the evolution and adoption of technologies. And we see big data and clouds are a major part of them. Um, this current selection of technologies. We noted that this year, 2012, which is actually almost about to be replaced, there were 48 technologies listed, uh, compared to say 27 in 2008. And Gartner notes that we're at an interesting moment, a time when the scenarios we've been talking about for a long time are almost becoming reality. So that says clouds and big data. And of course, these other technologies you see on this list are rapidly evolving and turning into reality, rather than just chucking up this uh, technology triggered uh, um, mountain of inflated expectations. If we look at issues of importance which underlie uh, the course and this talk, 
We have the economic imperative. There's a lot of data and a lot of jobs. We have the computing model and the industry adopted clouds, which are attractive for data analytics. We have the research model, which we will mention, the so-called fourth paradigm, as we move from uh, maybe a theory-centered uh, research to a data-driven science. Uh, we have obviously lots of opportunities in advancing um, technologies and algorithms. There's lots of opportunities in the application, which is applying the fourth paradigm to the various fields. And finally, we have the development in data science education, which, are the, which is an opportunity for universities to exploit.